five years looking, studying, remembering the fascism that we paid such a high price to defeat. And we asked the question, could it happen here? And for almost 75 years, the answer was, of course it could. Never, not in the United States of America. But we see the entirety of the Republican Party, every member of Congress, really with the exception of Mitt Romney, has completely subordinated their agency, their patriotism, their common sense, their judgment that reveres Donald Trump and will defend anything that he does, no matter how indefensible it is. And so we think about Donald Trump going to Mount Rushmore. That's not his place in the shadow of some of our greatest leaders. His place is at Stone Mountain in Georgia with the leaders of the failed slave state, the Confederates and their mythology as the country's trying to finally put it down and to move on from it. And so Donald Trump's priorities, every one of them seem to be aligned with the proposition of American weakness. He's weakening the country. We look like a banana republic in response to coronavirus. We are the epicenter of its death and suffering in the world. We are the most mismanaged country with regard to dealing with it in the civilized world, without any question. We look at the whole spectrum of this administration's actions, from the caging of children on our border, from the destruction of our values, the checks and balances eviscerated, our constitutional norms assaulted, the rule of law attacked, all of them in a stunning moment. And the question now is, who will stand up for the United States? Who will fight for America? Because in the end now, the American people have to do the job that our political leadership has not done. We have to put an end to this. We have to put a stop to it in November and the American people this morning should be filled with rage, with a righteous oh, anger that our young men and women, that Donald Trump had the gall to go to West Point and return the salutes of young second lieutenants who will soon be bound for Afghanistan with bounties, with contracts on their head that he knew about and did nothing about. I can't imagine that there has ever been a more shameful moment around the office of president of the United States in the entirety of the history of the country. We are in America's most rancid era because we have a president who is fundamentally anti-American. He doesn't understand our ideas, our ideals. He doesn't understand that it's his job to be part of the struggle to close the gap between our reality and those ideas and ideals to do the work of Americans to make our country more just. It is a truly, truly despicable hour in the history of our country.